somewhere in the Alps. So, Agent Gracefully, you're part of our spy exchange program from Canada? Try not to say my name too often. I'm trying to travel incognito. Actually, you're traveling in the Alps. What do you have there? I got something very important out of a smelly trash can. Well, of course it's smelly if you got it out of a trash can. You need a hobby. No, not smelly. Smelly! As in the society of meaningless evil larceny lying and yelling. Of course, our evil nemesis. Spy Fox, you've got to get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. No, I've got a better idea. I'd better get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Oh, and take this gadget from Professor Quack. You may need it. What is it? Dehydrated skis. Inside of this little pill is a pair of skis. All you have to do is add water. And pray tell, why would I need a pair of skis? I came to get information, not recreation. You may need them to get away from those bad guys. Good luck, Spy Fox. Bad guys? Got water? I've got to get out of here. Although this would be a nice getaway cottage, I've got to get this bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Spy Fox. This time it's Spy Fox 2. <laughs> If I was wearing skis, I bet I could escape from those goons down that Olympic ski jump. Here's where I keep... Water, work your magic! The dehydrated skis are now rehydrated! Feet don't fail me now! Skis, I mean! I what? I wonder which way I should go. Did you miss me, Chief? So you've analyzed the trash bag, I see. And what have you found? It's a model box 1-1000 scale for one evil robot. On the side it says, Some Assembly Required. Sounds like an excellent title for one of my adventures. It has a mailing label that reads, To La Roche, Care of Chateau La Roche, World's Fair. Hmm. Inside the box are assembly instructions. You'd better take these with you, Spy Fox. Wow, you can learn a lot by reading. If Smelly is involved, they must be up to their usual no goodness. You'd best go check out this World's Fair. Monkey Penny and Quack have already set up the mobile command center. I'm on my way, Chief. Spy Fox, are you okay? Shaken but not stirred, Monkey Penny. So it looks like we're on to something big. Yes, I think Smelly is up to some monkey business, Monkey Penny. And it looks like it's up to you, me, and Professor Quack to get to the bottom of it. Well, you and me anyway, Monkey Penny. I brought the assembly instructions I got out of the Smelly trash bag. 
Well, of course it's smelly if you got it out of a trash bag, Spy Fox. No, Monkey Penny, not smelly. Smelly, as in the Society for Meaningless Evil Larceny Lying and Yelling. Our evil nemesis. Why don't you leave those assembly instructions here with me? Then you can refer to them whenever you're back here at the Mobile Command Center. And remember, you can contact me via your spy watch at any time. Don't forget to check out the spy vending machine, Spy Fox. It's full of new gadgets for you to try out. I'm sure you'll find some of them quite useful. Thanks. Now I need to go get busy and go give that LaRoche up a Chateau LaRoche a visit and find out just what he's up to. A spy key replicator can. What's the key to this gadget, Professor Quack? That's a one-shot camera, like no other in the world. It's specifically made for replicating keys. You take a picture of the key you want to replicate, then bake it in an oven. The picture shrinks down and hardens into an exact duplicate of the key you took the picture of. It can only hold one picture at a time, but you can take a picture over another picture. If you bake a picture into the wrong key, just insert the key back into the camera and it will turn back into key film. I'm sorry, what did you say? Don't worry, it's a point and shoot easy bake gadget. It's a good thing I need my fiber. The termite grenade. I'm sure this gadget isn't bug-free, Professor Quack. How does it work? You've got to be careful with this one, Spy Fox. Toss it at something made of wood and get out of the way. It's good for one serious pulping. That's not something you want laying around the house. Not unless you're good friends with a carpenter. These blueprints are an acquired taste I haven't acquired yet. An alarm deactivator. What in the world could this gadget be used for? Well, it's used to turn off alarms. You attach one end to where the alarm signal is coming in, and then attach the other end to where the alarm signal is going out. The alarm signal is then redirected harmlessly into the alarm deactivator, keeping the alarm from going off. It just looks like a wire with two alligator clips on either end. Yes, it's beautiful in its simplicity, isn't it? I once printed these on exploding paper, but man, did those cause heartburn. A fingerprint replicator utensil kit. How does this work, Professor Quack? You'll eat this one up, Spy Fox. You place the fingerprint sending fork device on your target's plate. Then when they pick it up to start eating, their fingerprint will show up on the fingerprint receiving spoon device. This is hands down one of your best spy gadgets yet, Professor Quack. I hope to follow it up with a matching salt and pepper shaker. Maybe if I mix these with a little goat's milk. Nah, let's not go there. The Stealth Vac. How does it work? You just hook up the handy nozzle, then press vacuum to suck up the particles into the handy travel bag. Or press Reverse Vac to blow the particles housed in the travel bag back out through the nozzle attachment. And it does it all in perfect silence. Ingenious, Professor Quack. I'd prefer those between two slices of bread, but when duty calls, By heat. This looks like some hot work. How does this gadget work, Professor Quack? Now this gadget, I'm really proud of. You can spray it on something, say like a thermometer, and watch the temperature rise right before your eyes. Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. You can say that again. All right. 
Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. Hmm. Light on the palate, rough on the tummy. I bet these are cool. Spy skates, they look sharp, Professor Quack. How do they work? I've always loved the grace and beauty of figure skating. But being in the spy biz never left time for the years of training. So I created these. You simply slip them on and insert a diagram of the skate maneuver you want to perform, and voila! The skates, with you in them, perform it perfectly. Well, those could sure help to put the villains on ice. Ah, right, Spy Fox. I like these new blueberry-flavored blueprints. I'll just put this spy gadget back in the vending machine. This is a rather cool looking device. What is it? One of those novelty gadgets that lets you see what you'll look like in 50 years? It's an ID maker. Of my own creation, of course. It's for making identification cards. Fascinating. How does it work? You place a photo in the photo slot, choose an occupation, and any name you like, then press the Process ID button. A completed ID will pop out of the machine. Professor, you're amazing. What if I made an ID, but then I change my mind and want to make a different one? Well, if you don't like the ID you created, you could make another card. Just reset the name and occupation, insert a new photo, then press the Process ID button again. That sounds like fun. Creating false ID cards is something only secret agents can do. And then only when we're on a case. Right! That's a load of crap. Do you ever feel bored having the job of a service guard? Oh, I hardly ever get bored. Hmm, the entrance is closed and it's locked up tighter than an impervious steel door. Excuse me, sir. What seems to be the problem? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but unfortunately, I cannot allow you to enter through the service entrance. I'm sorry, and I can only let cashiers with proper ID in today. See? It has the job title of cashier and a matching photo. I seem to have lost my ID. Can you let me in without one? I feel your pain, sir. Really, I do. Unfortunately... It seems that I'll have to find a way to get the proper ID. Exposition is so Listen to it. A free photo booth. Just one of the many joyous pleasures... Dentist. Golfer. Wait. Wrestler. Fisherman. Dishwasher. Jock. Ballot. Clown. Cashier. A Nun. Dentist. Arena. France. It looks great. Excellent. The photo's in place. More rust. Ned, Murray, Carl, Rudy, Nep, Chuck, Reginald, Chuck, Jock, Act, Perfect, Wait, Bet, Cashier. 
Professor Quack's machine works perfectly. My identification card is... I expect that this will come in quite handy. Here you are, sir. One cashier ID card. Oh my, I'm so happy that you were able to find it. Let me guess, it was in your other pants, wasn't it? Why, yes it was. You must be psychic. If you'll excuse me, I'm late for work and they need me in the restaurant. Oh, I understand. I won't keep you any longer. I'll just keep your ID on file for you, Chuck. Keep up the good work. Have a spectacular day. And if I don't see you tomorrow... What's the most challenging part of being a chef? Trying to blend in. Okay. Oddly enough, the Venus flytrap is not a native of the rainforest. They actually are a native to the coast of North and South Carolina. This little fella is a long way from home. Ah, Napoleon LaRoche. I should have known you'd taken up with the likes of Smelly. So Spycore has sent the famous Spy Fox to try and stop my plans for world domination. World domination? Er, uh, of course. Ha! Ah, since you are one of the few people who could possibly understand my genius, I will explain my entire plan to you in nauseating detail. You see, I reversed the scale on the smelly evil dog bot assembly instructions. I've created a 1000 to 1 scale fully functioning evil dog bot. Just where do you think you can hide such a monstrosity? You silly spy. You're standing in it. Of course, you've disguised the evil dog bot as the centerpiece for the World's Fair. Complete with a revolving restaurant. One has to eat, no? Observe the means to my world domination. People buying tickets for the World's Fair do not realize that as they file to the turnstile, they're unwittingly winding the highly advanced clockwork mechanism within the evil dog bot. When the one millionth person has filed through, the dog bot, now wound to maximum capacity, will embark upon its horrifying rampage of destruction! <laughs> Once I have unleashed the dog bot, all the world's leaders will sit up and beg for mercy! It is unstoppable! It cannot be called off because it has no off switch! Yes, I have removed the off switch and hidden it somewhere in the World's Fair. So cleverly, so subtly, that you will never find it! That's what you think, LaRoche. Even if you did find the off switch, you would still need the activation code to turn the switch off. And even if you had the off switch and the activation code, you could never hope to get past the diabolically clever security device located in the evil dog bot's Achilles heel. Which is the only way into the dog bot's inner workings. It is hopeless, Monsieur Le Fox. There's no way you can beat me! <laughs> You'll never get away with this, LaRoche. Oh, I think I will. And now, Monsieur Le Spy Fox. Adieu! Judging by those monstrous metallic molars, I've been imprisoned in the dog bot's mouth. How humiliating. I must find a way out of this cell so I can stop that evil roach. If I could only reach that fire escape through these teeth. I can gather information about La Roach with this talk balloon. La Roach's goons didn't follow the assembly instructions close enough. They seem to have left a few gears missing out of this contraption. I bet this loose gear is supposed to go somewhere. This gear, this gear is too small. This gear is too big to go there. This gear is too big to go there. I wonder where this gear goes. This gear, this gear is too small. This gear must go somewhere in here. That did the trick. Well, I guess it's like they say, the tooth shall set you free. Uh. 
Talk about escaping by the skin of your teeth. Now to stop La Roche and his evil plans for world domination. My spy watch is beeping. I'd better answer it. Please stand by. Spy Fox, Agent Walter Wireless has intercepted a microfish message from Dotty Dash. Where's it coming from? It sounds like it's coming from an exhibit called Wee World. Wee World, eh? Sounds silly. The message is staticky, and Walter Wireless needs to get closer to hear it. You can pick him up here at the Mobile Command Center. By the way, I've recorded Napoleon LaRoche's evil plans, and I'm sending them to you via the Spy Watch. I look forward to hearing the dish. Monkey Penny, out. <laughs>